Hey guys, just want to give you a little update. Um, since the last update when I passed my Server Plus certification from CompTIA, I jumped right into the Linux Plus certification track. And that certification consists of two parts, two different tests. It used to be 101 and 102. Now, currently, it is 103 and 104. Now, for costs, you have to pay twice, pretty much, for this test when you go take them. In other words, you pay for a voucher from CompTIA, right? And that voucher will only get you either the 103 test or the 104 test. You choose when you get your voucher. And you need to complete both tests to get your Linux Plus certification. Now, having it split in two does make it quite a bit easier to manage and learn because it's a lot to learn and memorize and study all at once. So it's nice to have it half and half. But essentially, each voucher is about 180 bucks, so you're looking at about 360 bucks all in the end for the Linux Plus certification. That's assuming you pass them both the first time. I did jump into the first test a little bit too soon, and I just missed it, to be honest with you. And I studied another two weeks extra hard. I took it again, and I did pass. So the first time I'd only studied for maybe three or four days. I was a little too confident. I do have this knowledge in my background, so I thought I was a little bit stronger than I was. So of course I don't recommend taking a test with one week study. I'd say study two, three, four weeks if you're familiar with it, and maybe two months if you're not familiar with it at all. And let's go ahead. I'm going to tell you a few of the questions I wasn't sure about and some of the tougher ones that I made notes of on the drive home so I wouldn't forget. So one question I think I did get right, but it was a little bit tricky. It was regarding the TR command. Remember that? Translate. And it's probably in one of my previous videos. So the question was something like, what would this command output? And the command was echo, quote, hello world, close quote, pipe it to TR dash D and single quote A E I O U single quote. I know it's hard to really picture without seeing it in front of you, but I'm just giving you a, a basic knowledge of that. So what the TR dash D means is delete. So you can use the TR in a very simple way to delete characters. So the dash D A E I O U was saying delete all the vowels from this hello world before you print it. So that was the answer there. TR with a dash D means delete the following characters which precede it. Another question I wasn't sure about. It was something like, what file passes the boot arguments from the bootloader to the kernel? It could have been a file or a process maybe. I think it was a file. I really have no idea um, during the boot up process. So if anybody does have an idea about that, you can go ahead and leave a comment or something. But what file transfers your boot options from the grub bootloader to the kernel during boot up? I just wasn't really familiar with that. There was another question I really had no idea on. It was basically which redirect option, like you have your less than and greater than, you know your redirects, your input redirect and your output redirect. So it said, what redirect option will take all the input until a line break or the next line? And then it will stop taking input. And two of the multiple choice I remember were the ampersand space less than was one option. And the other option I remember was exclamation point space less than or bang space, space less than. Now I didn't know if ampersand or exclamation point is some kind of director to tell the input to stop reading at the end of a line or a line break sort of thing. So I basically guessed on that one. I just did not know. I still have yet to even figure that one out. I've been looking around on Google. I can't find it. Unfortunately, I can't remember what the other two options were at this point, but they didn't seem right. It was just like a double, a double input maybe instead of a single bracket. Another question which I do know the answers, but the question was a little bit misleading and confusing. The question was, what is the main configuration file for GNU Grub, G-N-U Grub? 
my problem was I did not know if that was legacy grub or grub2 which have very different files now in the end I had to assume it was grub legacy because it didn't specify it was grub2 and your grub legacy main configuration files you sort of have two it could be menu.lst or grub.conf c-o-n-f and your grub2 main configuration file is grub.cfg so it was kind of a guess there on what the GNU grub was talking about was it old type grub or new type grub because they use totally different configuration file names another tricky question was regarding the dd command the disk dump sort of like a copy command so it was saying how do you copy just the like the master boot record the boot sector of a disk without wiping out any of the other partitions or anything else and two of the lines I remember they had a, a block size and a number at the end of the DD command you had your IF your input your OF output then you had space BS equals and the block size was either 512 or 440 I, I honestly didn't know what that meant um, of course it's kilobytes but I didn't know which one refers to a master boot record and then they both had a space one now I was assuming that the one might be just the first section the MBR again I don't know the answer to this one yet I've been researching it a bit I think I found some Google stuff related to it but I'm not sure if a block size for MB, MBR would be something around 440 or 512 but that's another tricky question make sure you check DD and how to just copy like a boot sector only another tricky question I had what Debian package command would allow you to rerun the configuration questions of a package without reinstalling it I have not figured this one out yet I've been kinda of moving on to my part two studies but if anybody does know the answer to that I'd love to know also some commands related to the Debian package commands which you just run it to reconfigure it so to speak without reinstalling it another question that I wasn't sure about there was a question which which of these commands would not update a file access timestamp you know you have your your timestamps anytime you touch a file it will update and I'll eliminate the obvious ones which of course were touch of course it does there were two that I wasn't sure about let's just say we're talking about the host file for example one was the command file so like file space Etsy host does that update the access time on the file on the file you're using with the command the other command was an echo dash n quote hello quote appending it to the Etsy hosts so I wasn't sure what the N meant if it meant do not echo I don't think it does I think it means new line from the research I've done so I think the file command would be the one that would not update the access timestamp but that was a trickier question so make sure you look into that also another question I was not sure about it's related to the proc directory the virtual directory right it holds your IRQs your DMAs your CPU info mem info there was one question of which file in the proc directory would show system config settings and kernel settings I did not know it was multiple choice I can't remember the answers but I really did not know the answer to that one I need to research that when I get a chance if you have any ideas on that go ahead and leave a comment another question was how do you deactivate a swap file or a swap partition one of, something like that and I was familiar with the swap on command after you create a swap partition and you activate it you have to use swap on to turn it on and I think I wrote that was a fill in box it was tricky I think I put in swap off and it looks like that command does exist hopefully that was a correct answer and finally there was one command how do you create a file with all the disk quota information I was torn between two commands here this was another fill-in it was not a multiple choice so you had to guess I mean it had to come out of your brain and I was tied between ed quota and rep quota now ed quota is the command you use to set up a user's quotas I wouldn't say it really it really shows all the file quota information 
So I went with rep quota, which is report quota. And that one does show a report of the quotes. I think that is the correct command for this question. So again, the, you might see a question like, what commands would you use to create a file showing all the disk quota information? I believe rep quota is the answer to that. Well, that completes my review of the Linux part one test. It was trickier than I thought, but they always are. You think you mastered it? I was getting 100 on every practice test, yet I was struggling on this one. So it's never as easy as you think. And I'm right in the middle of part two study now. I took a break to make this quick video. I'm getting right back into it. I'm real excited to work on part two. Thanks for watching Last Humans Tech. See you next time.